So, Laurent, you and your colleagues at Deutsche Telekom have been very busy as it relates to AI. You've got Magenta AI, you've got Open Telecom Cloud, you've got this recent announcement with NVIDIA around an industrial AI cloud. Maybe you can just help me generally understand what your goals are in terms of AI as it's used within the company and then what you're trying to do to provide services to your customers. So, Sean, indeed, um, this year is a complete disruption year. Um, AI was already on the agenda a year ago. It was more kind of a new tool we need to consider to look at. Today, for us, it's as brutal as the invention of, of the steam machine in the industry. It's nothing less. So it moved from one item on the agenda to a core enabler across everything we can do. And as you rightfully said, we look at it through two main answers. First of all, what can AI help us to do for our customers? And what are the services we can give to customers? And there, to make it simple, our goal is to, as fast as possible, offer to our customers completely new experiences leveraging AI. And the AI phone that was showcased earlier this year is something that we built with partners because it's for us the way to have the latest AI innovations embedded into a product fast enough for our customers. We have here two main partners, three about to onboard, that help us to really craft that more to come this year. The second one is more how can AI help us deliver services, products, telco core capabilities faster than in the past. And here we're also really accelerating. And there, as a telco in Europe, we have sovereign obligations. And there we again split that in two. Everything that is really related to strong data privacy and sovereign obligation, there we're really willing and needing to build our own infrastructures that will help us to scale AI by protecting those data. Network data, customer data, some of them we just can't give them anywhere else out. We're there, we need to build. For the rest, that is less critical, not sovereign, we're also really accelerating, reaching out to hyperscaler technologies and, and to, to create new things faster. Perhaps some numbers to make it touchable because we're way beyond the POC stage. We're using those things today already for production cases. We have here released recently a new app that we developed in four weeks instead of three months, just using an AI-based low-code, no-code platform. So it's not low-code for a POC, it's really production usage of an application that we released on the market. Um, we are today able to perform changes on legacy applications using um, Vibe platforms in a matter of days instead of months. So 12 million lines of code that we analyze in two days to narrow down to 500K where lines of code where we need to do the change. So that's already today happening and scaled in our organization. So from your position leading the engineering organization, I'm curious as you've gone through this transition and you go, you know, develop a new service in days instead of weeks or months. How much of the change has been technology driven? How much of it is actual change management and uh, accommodating a new way of working for your team members? I like your question because that is today the nut we need to crack that we haven't cracked yet. But um, as for every big change, you always have the classical distributions of the early movers, the happy followers, and maybe the cautious people. Um, the challenge we face, and it seems the industry is also facing, is the early movers are always there, 15, 20%. The point is those ones have the gains that are in the scales of several hundred percent. The followers have marginal gains, small incremental. So our challenge right now, right now is how can we have more people not waiting to receive a tool that has been acknowledged and approved by the large corporations, but how can we have more people that are actually themselves kind of following the market, understanding what's happening, trying almost on their own to play with a few things in a secured manner, and then asking to adopt a new tool. The cadence of new platforms is insane at the moment. It's every two weeks, it's a competition, it's Cloud one day, cloud code one day. It's Anthropic. The other, I mean, it's, it's Windsurf the other day. It's it's Codeo. It's moving permanently. So 
the ability to follow the pace for a large corporation is, is pretty challenging. So hence the, the need for us to have people empowered to follow the market, test themselves, and then asking to scale. That's how we try to scale for the moment. I feel like as telcos adopt AI, it's really changing the dynamics with their vendors. So I'm curious to get your perspective on what vendors can do to make the technology easier for you to consume. It's a challenging moment for vendors today because I think the vendors themselves have understood that probably the existing approaches to sell services through APIs or portals in SaaS mode is completely shifting. Uh, um, they are more and more um, embedding AI on top of their SaaS models. A and that's what we are today checking and considering to scale. Um, platforms on ITSM, platforms on observability have embedded on top of their own services um, AI to make their services better and to offer to customers improved services. We're in early discussions here. We do see here two sides, both gain in speed by adopting that out of the box AI, let me call it that way. But on the other side, as a telco, we also are very cautious on the data because going all in on an ITSM solution has consequences, including sometimes data of customers that we are very cautious to not, not share completely. Uh, um, so it's, it's, it's a tipping point right now. We're observing, uh, um, ready to, to follow and accelerate when needed. So last question here, Laurent. Um, what are you most excited about as it relates to Deutsche Telekom's AI ambitions? What are you most concerned about? What I'm most excited about, I'm pretty sure that what is happening right now is, is a turn that is probably similar to when software-defined networks started to come. It's at least of that size. For me, it's even a change stronger than cloud. So that, and it's also, I believe 25 is going to be also the year where the usual split between legacy and cloud native is going to be blurred. So all these new things will become more and more available on legacy applications because the compute power is there. So that I'm ex excited about because we're writing history. Uh, um, and I think as Telecom, we're leading the path here, if I discuss with my peers. What I'm worried about is surfing the wave. If we're able to continue to surf the wave and to be fast, it's going to be, for us, a great success and we will be continuing to lead the industry. But if you don't focus on speed, in three months you can be outdated. So as a chief engineer, my goal and my role is to make sure that as a company we keep the pace with the industry. Very good. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective with our audience. Thanks, Thank you.